Cast your vote. It passes unanimously. Item five is the primary items. I'm going to receive an Oklahoma River maintenance project update. Paul, you're going to do that for? Afternoon, Mr. Chairman, committee members. Uh, we, you have two items on your monthly maintenance report this month. Item number one is an update on the uh, May Avenue Dam structural repairs. Uh, that project was advertised for bids in October and we took bids uh, right before Thanksgiving. And unfortunately, uh, we only had one bidder and the bid that was received came in about two and a half times what the estimate was. Um, part of the reason was is this is the first time that we've done this type of, of job. Um, there's a lot of specialty work involved when we were working over water and certain requirements. Uh, some of the main issues that contributed to the overbid was uh, the specifications included a requirement to go back with the original type of paint that was on the gates and all the controls and it, it didn't allow for an alternative. Uh, since this time we've learned that there are some alternatives that we can use. Um, another issue is that the, the type of paint that was specified required uh, two different I guess what you'd call specialty applicators certifications. And there weren't a lot of people in Oklahoma City that had those certifications. So as a result, they felt like they could not bid. Uh, the paint that was specified, the paint seems to be a big issue in this, in this uh, overbidding. Uh, in order to apply that paint that was specified, the contractors were going to be required on each gate to essentially build an enclosure or a tent over each of the gates and keep it climate controlled in order for the paint that was specified to adhere to the steel. Um, you know, hindsight is twenty twenty. When we talked to the one bidder, he said there are a couple different alternatives where the temperature is, it's, it may not be quite as good a paint, but for the application you're looking at, it can be applied in the cold winter months and you don't have to do the exact type of preparation as far as the sandblasting is concerned and you don't have to keep that temperature constant, i.e. you don't have to build those enclosures. So the paint was a main issue um, and the temperature requirements to adhere the paint to the structure. Um, the sandblasting material that was specified in order to get the old paint off and get it down to the bare steel, that was such that it was going to have to be caught and contained and disposed of because we couldn't let it go down the river. Okay, it wasn't environmentally friendly, so to speak. We've learned that there are a couple different types of sandblasting media that are environmentally friendly that obviously when we redo the specification will specify one or the other and not the type that has to be caught and disposed of every day and you know then we won't have to worry about the environmental impact on that and finally the fourth issue that somewhat contributed maybe not as much as the other issues but um, again because we were working over and what they call an aquatic environment the type of workers compensation insurance that was going to be required of the contractor would be the same that would be required of a longshoreman who worked on the dock, say in New York City or New Jersey. Longshoreman's workers' compensation was going to be inquired, was required, and that we think probably added about two hundred and fifty thousand dollars to the bid. So all those elements combined resulted in number one us only getting one bidder and the cost being almost three times as much as what we had estimated. We have since uh, gotten with the consultant and we have meetings scheduled in January to sit down in detail, 
do, a to do as much of a revision on the specification as we have to do, and it'll be ready to bid again late fall, you know, maybe early fall next year. Again, as I said previously, we're hoping to do the May Avenue Dam this winter and move to the Paul Brum Dam next year. Um, we would really like to see if there would be any way, and of course, we're going to have to work with the Boathouse folks and Jeannie and her folks to see if we might be able to, with the lessons that we've learned, possibly do two dams next year so we keep on our schedule of, of getting all three of them done in a three-year period. Um, this is a setback, but, it, but it's a valuable setback in our opinion because there's a lot of things that we've learned, and that will allow us to do a very similar, if not identical, specification for the other two dams when it comes time to do them. Again, I want to reiterate that there are no there are no major structural or mechanical issues with any of the dams at this moment that would require us to you know have to do this right now. You know, there's you know they're just showing their age. They're about 15 years old now, and there's some wear and tear. There's some paint that's needed. There's some concrete work that's needed, but it is nothing. Those dams have been inspected two times now by, by, you know, by our licensed structural engineer, and they have assured us there are no things that require our immediate attention right now. This is just, again, it's a preventative maintenance type issue that we, we really would have liked to have done, you know, starting this month, but we're going to have to put it off. So. Um, uh, I assume the gates have to be in the dry, but they've also got to be up. Uh, do you have to divert the water into through the lock, or how, how would you do well, that? Well, our plan was with May Avenue, we were going to have to completely drain the May Basin on the upstream side of the dam and then lower the western or the Brum Basin significantly, about four feet to expose the downstream side of the gates right. to get them dry because of the painting. And there is some concrete work down there below the water line that's going to have to be repaired. So that was our plan. Okay. So you're going to take all the water, but on the basin you're working on, you've got to get it all out because, you know, of course, it's a lot deeper on the upstream side, and you've got to expose everything. So you basically have to take all the water out on the upstream side of the dam. So, yeah. um, the second item is our public works maintenance facility. Uh, you're aware that this has been delayed slightly. Um, we ran into an issue with how we were going to extend water to the facility from Pennsylvania Avenue. We had two options. We could either come down Southwest 9th Street and come through a neighborhood and then extend the line over to the east, or we could just come across all the open ground there uh, to the north side of the neighborhood we're talking about. Um, the line, the actual water line that serves those houses in that neighborhood is a subpar line and the utilities department has an interest in upgrading that line to better serve those citizens there. So what we're going to do is we're going to come down Southwest 9th Street to a certain point and then extend east over to our building. As a result, the utilities department is going to help pay for the cost to extend the line through the neighborhood to a point of terminus and then the public works department will pick it up from that point and take it eastward to the facility. So, so there's been a little bit of work involved in getting that all figured out and the cost estimates involved as to who's going to pay for what. But as your report indicates, uh, we anticipate taking bids early in March, starting the work and, and then having it done by this time next year, late December, or January of 17. So. That's where we're at with that. Okay. Any questions or Paul? Any questions? Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Motion to receive that report. So moved. Vote. And it passes. Item B is to receive the report on the quarterly meeting of the River Stakeholder Group. Uh, you have a written report in your packet. Uh, Pat, anything you want to add to it? Any questions on it? Motion to receive that report. Move. Cast your vote. It passes. 
Item C is to receive the unaudited interim financial statements for the period ending October 31st. Any questions? Need a motion? Move the item. Second. It passes. Now, item D is to receive the report on the Riverfront Redevelopment Authority revenue expenses for the current and upcoming fiscal years. I ask uh, staff to put this together um, based on our earlier conversations uh, on a number of things, but certainly now that the sand mining has completely gone away. And um, so the, the report is in there. If you have any questions on it, we can go over it a little bit. But, uh, you know, the bottom line is we not only are we running a shortfall in the first six months of this year, we'll certainly run it by the end of this fiscal year. Um, and then if we if everything stayed the same uh, would be a, have a major shortfall next year and uh, you, the last page has a uh, tabulation of our cash balance and reserves and where that would be at that that's what what we pay out of when we have the shortfall that we do so um, as you know I've I've had a, a small group, working group of the trust looking at revenue and expenses and, and we're still talking about items that we may adjust in the current year we in, that we're in and certainly in next year's um, budget to try to get down to, um, to where we're at least, you know, breaking even hopefully or, or, or not taking much out of the revenue shortfall. We, um, you can, there's also a tabulation on the last page that shows you what we could have drawn out of the uh, fund at the Oklahoma City Community Foundation uh, had we desired to do that over the years. And you can see it really wouldn't have helped uh, the kind of shortfall that you see in the report. So um, this, this is just for your information and to let you know we're still looking at the revenue and expense issue and, and hopefully we can find some adjustments into remaining of the current year that we're in and find some way to deal with next year and, and bring it more in line. Any so questions? Mr. Chairman, um, it says estimated shortfall here of 184,000. So from a practical viewpoint at the end of the day, if we don't have any more income, what do we do with, as far as the shortfall is concerned? <clears throat> Are you looking at page four? Yes. Okay, <clears throat> that shortfall w is for the next fiscal year. If you'll turn back to the page right before that, page three, you'll see that the estimated shortfall for this fiscal year is just slightly over 129,000. Well, my question is still the same though. Okay, I mean, and your question is if that shortfall is accurate. No, if it's there, <laughs> we're spending more than we're bringing in, who makes up the difference? It comes out of your out of the, out of the, out of the uh, cash reserves. balance you see on the last page. What I call refer to as the reserves, cash reserves that we have, and you'll see that uh, in 2011 we had 548, and then over the years we've drawn down on that, and you see that that uh, we ended June 5th, June of this year with 342,000. Okay. So. <clears throat> and then. Trustee Dudman, right above that, you'll see that the actual cash balance as of today is about 271000 As I understand it, the reserves, those reserves were built up over the years when we brought in a lot more money than we, than we put out, especially in the, in the uh, sand mining and oil and gas revenue. But as you can see, we've been digging into it pretty good over the years too. So. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I noticed in the report here that it said staff um, is continuing to seek alternative re re revenue. Could you enlighten us a little well, bit? Well, I mean, what the it, possibility is it, it, again it, that would have to come either from um, the oil and gas business picking up, <laughs> or finding a another spot within our jurisdiction for sand mining to take effect. And, and I assume Delisi is still looking up and down the river, uh, even though the one that they'd looked at we thought was a good prospect they turned down. Um, and then there's a, the, any areas along the river that could take a, a new development, you know, some kind of a, 
um, a, a business or something along the river that would provide lease money to the river trust for that land would be another source of revenue. So that's that's about all we've got to work with, and, and you know we're looking at all those options right now. Any other questions? Motion to receive that report. So moved. Second. Cast your vote. And it passes unanimously. Item E is to approve the park improvement and maintenance agreement among the Riverfront Redevelopment Authority, the city, and the Oklahoma Bicycle Society for installation and maintenance of three biking running bulletin boards and one bike rack at various locations along the river corridor. As part of the Oklahoma City Community Foundation, we've been involved in funding part of this, so I want to recuse myself from this discussion. Any questions? Motion? Second. Cast your vote. And it passes. Item F is to adopt a resolution recommending that the Oklahoma City Council designate Crystal Lake, uh, located at 6625 Southwest 15th, as a city park. Mr. Cupper, I, I assume the Parks Department is okay with this? <laughs> yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Doug Cupper, Director of Parks and Recreation. Uh, as we were looking at our real estates and, and working with the uh, um, chief uh, city's finest in enforcing uh, the uh, no sexual predators within 500 feet of our parks, we discovered that because Crystal Lake is not actually designated as a park, police can't enforce that, that particular law. And uh, with City Care doing such a dynamic job of bringing youth out to that facility, uh, we, we don't want to take any chances on them coming in contact with, with uh, um, people that, that may be registered sex offenders. Uh, the other piece of the coin is uh, we're also uh, anticipating what our next geo bond offering might be for the Parks Department. And at this point in time, Crystal Lake does not fall under our preview to uh, offer an opportunity for geo bond type of improvements out there. And we do have uh, quite a few ADA requirements that we're facing out in that area with the improvements that they've done that we want to be able to help them out uh, with possibly with the next GO bond offering. So those are two of the reasons that we would like to, to get your uh, support and go into the city council to designate Crystal Lake. Um, the Board of Park Commissioners uh, have approved that recommendation. Uh, Larry was there from City Care to uh, talk about it to uh, the park see Larry here today but anyways we think it's a great idea and we're the ones that came up with it so uh, if it fails I'll take credit for it if it passes then somebody else takes it since the park is under a lease agreement with them uh, then that designating a city park won't add to your workload other than what you mentioned about no, doing sir, maybe since, some since it's already managed uh, out to uh, city care it doesn't change city cares agreement with you all it just uh, basically is an underlying layer uh, to the uh, holdings that the River Trust administers. Okay. Any questions, Mr. Doug? Move approval. Second. I have motion and second. And it passes. Item six is a claims docket. Cast your vote. That passes. Item seven is additional items. Any comments from staff? Uh, Pat, your written reports in the packet. Do you have anything else you want to add to that? Any questions for Pat on his report? Any other questions? Comments from staff? You're in a hurry to get out of here. It's Christmas week, isn't it? <laughs> I have nowhere to go. <laughs> comments by trustees. Comments by citizens in the audience. As I started to say, Mike, the Whitewater is, is coming right along. Uh, the, are all of the channels in concrete now? Uh, yes, yeah, so they're still working on the bottom or the top pool, but they're pretty, they're getting very close and the, the rapid blocks are all taking, they're all being installed right now. That's what you see, the blue blocks that are going throughout the center. So it's. Make an excellent project. The construction team's doing a 
great job. Okay, very good. Looking forward to the opening. Well, hope <laughs> everyone's ready to take a ride in the raft. So, all right, thank you. Okay. Any comments? We are adjourned. <laughs>